Welcome to another short tutorial about uh, Burnet Embroidery Software Customizer. Today we look at the canvas we are working with, at the measuring tools we have, at the grid, at the background color, etc. So let's just start right on the top here. Metric or US. You can just select it and it will switch forward and back for you. So pretty much if you switch it, everything in the entire program is switched to either metric or US. Today we will work in the metric because it is easier in the embroidery to work with metric and it's certainly a lot more accurate. As you can see, I put already the little bear on the screen. And if I would like to know how big that bear is, it will tell me here at the bottom, it is uh, 64 millimeters wide and 88 millimeters high. Now, how much is that really? Is there a possibility I can display this on the screen so I know this would be the real size? Absolutely. If we go to settings, and I would do that the first time you open this program, go and calibrate your screen. So we're going to say calibrating screen, and then this little box comes up. Now you will take a ruler. It has to be in metric, because as you can see in the middle there, we are measuring in millimeter. That's much more accurate. So now you are going to measure the box, the height from there to there, and then we measure the width from the screen and put the numbers in the boxes. Once you have this done, we are going to say OK, and now the screen is calibrated. What this means is if you press 1 on your keyboard or you go up here and you say 100%, now, right now, this pair is exactly the size it would stitch out on your embroidery machine. Measuring tool. If I would like to measure the size the bear has from ear to ear, I got a measuring tool under view. There is a measuring tool. The shortcut would be M. So if you press M on your keyboard, this comes up. Now I can just click here. It starts at zero. And if I go straight over, I do not click. I'm just going to hold it right there. You see from ear to ear, it would be 44.8 millimeter. As soon as you click, the ruler resets and I'm back to zero and I could go and measure something else. So every time you click, it starts again. And as you can see, it also measures how many degrees I'm going down. So if you would like to know the angle of that heart there, so it would be pretty much, uh, well, probably about 36 degrees. To get rid of the tool, just press M on your keyboard again. And then you can go and pick up your select object tool again. Let's take a look at the grid. Right now, we cannot see the grid. But with the simple left hand mouse click, you can turn that grid on. How big is that grid? If you make a right hand click on the grid, it will show you that the grid is right now 12.7 by 12.7 millimeter. You absolutely can change that to any size you would like. If you have set this to US inches and you make a right hand click certainly you see that 12.5 is actually a half an inch by a half an inch so you see you can easily turn that grid on and off the rulers here on the top and on the side Let's go back to metric. See there is a zero, so it's obviously here somewhere there is zero position. 
but this really has nothing to do with embroidery or anything. It is strictly a measuring device or something you can have a little reference point what you're looking at. If you hover over here on that triangle and you click and now I'm moving and I'm going to line this up with the left hand side of the bear and let go see the zero vertical snap to the side of his arm and on the top I just let it go somewhere but if I would like the zero exactly on top of this bear I would just do this again I click and drag line it up on the top line it up on the side and then when I let go I see that the zero is exactly here in this corner of the bear. If I randomly click here on one of the rulers I create a guide. This guide I can take and adjust. So if I go over here and now I would like to see how wide that is. I know that the, you can see this on the bottom how wide the bear is but if I zoom in a little bit more I can certainly go and see that very accurately reading how big that bear would be. So it's about 60 here is 70 in the middle 65 millimeters wide. If you look at on the bottom there you see that the bear is 64.6 millimeters so that's just about 65 millimeters wide so that's how you can adjust the ruler if you would not like that guide anymore click on it and sort of flip it away and it goes away the same thing is on the side you can click and you can have as many measuring devices as you would like or if you would like to have just a marker so you can divide your screen with something so you don't have to count the grids if you do something you absolutely can do that and when you're done just click and flip them away let's have a look at the magnifier the magnifier up here allows me to zoom in and zoom out on my can there are several possibilities how to do that when I hover over with my mouse on top of the bear and I'm using the wheel of my mouse and I push the wheel away I'm zooming in and if I go the other way I'm zooming out you are not as you can see making this bear smaller or bigger you are just adjusting the view possibility number two you go over here and you get the zoom and now you see there is a little magnifier attached I click hold the mouse button and drag let it go and here the ear is as big as possible in the view or there are some pre-selected magnification where you can just select let's say I want to say see the hoop plus the bear here's the hoop and the bear just a selected part so as you can see the bear is selected with the point so if I click here it would just show me the bear if I click outside and I would say selected is not even an option because there is nothing selected to fit is it's going to make it as big as possible on the screen the fit also has a shortcut if I zoom out here or you lost yourself on the screen and you don't know where you are let's make a little example let's say you did something like this that means you are 7334 magnification somewhere out there and you can't find your bear you just press the zero on your keyboard and the bear will be exactly in the middle of your screen right next to it is what they call the pan function as you know in any windows program you can go here on the bottom and you can move the screen from side to side or you can move the screen up and down they have several different more functions to do this 
if you hit the P on your keyboard or click on that shortcut up here a little hand will appear and now when you click and drag you can drag the bear around are there another possibility yes there is if I hit P again the hand is going away and my cursor appears again in normal function if I go to the setup under options and I go to scrolling you see here on the bottom mouse wheel behavior so the default action is as you told you you can scroll in and scroll out doesn't make the magnification smaller or bigger but you could use this also and reset it to horizontal or vertical scroll right away I don't really like that I'm too used to having the mouse going uh, magnificate in and out but as you can see if I'm holding my alt key I would do a vertical scroll and if I can hold a control key I would go with the horizontal scroll so let me show you this so if I click OK and I'm holding my alt key and now I'm wheeling the bear is going up and down if I hold the control key and wheel my mouse the bear goes from side to side and as you might saw in that little window before if I hold the shift key I go much faster in and out with the, the zooming than just zooming in and out with the wheel turning without having another key depressed let's take a look at the hoops as we know from the introductory part the hoops who are in the program are only the Burnett hoops if I make a right hand click on top of the hoop up here and I use that drop down you see only the Burnett hoops if you don't have a Burnett you have to create your own if you would see how far you can stitch in the hoop so let's create a hoop and in the description on the bottom I gave you all the measurements you need to put in for the most hoops Bernina carries for the other machines because I'm pretty sure there is probably more customers out there using this program program that don't have a Burnett embroidery machine so let's click on here and let's say create we're going to create a new hoop but we are going to create an oval hoop because we are going to use the large oval hoop from the Bernina side so like uh, A30 or 750 or uh, even the 200 all the ones that have the new embroidery module so the hoop looks like this the measurements I measured for you already so here would be 255 the width you can stitch is 145 and then here this I measured also for you in that particular hoop it would be 120 so that's how it's going to look I'm going to say save hoop and I'm going to give him a new name and say large oval and press OK and say OK and voila here is your large oval hoop created for you and when you click up here now you see there is a new large oval hoop created for you so that's pretty neat like I said look at the bottom of the description and I gave you all the measurements you need to put in to get the rest of the hoops background color as you can see the default is this gray color for this purpose of the next few minutes I will turn the hoop off I just click on the hoop and I will turn the grid off so now I just have this gray color let's assume you have a white t-shirt or a blue t-shirt and you will like to sort of see how that bear is going to look on another background if you go up here and try to find a way to change that color you're gonna drive yourself silly 
it is pretty nicely hidden. Right here, thread colors. Click on the thread colors and this window will pop up. All the way on the top, it says BKG, that's for background. Double click on it and now on the top you see the color. If you click down, you have pre-selected colors you can do. Let's do white for the start. I say OK. I say OK. And as you can see now, the background is white. Let's try another color. Double click on it. I use this drop down. And if you say more colors, you are going to get this standard color wheel or whatever they would call this or if you want to go to custom over here you have all shades of all the colors you can adjust the background of your color including you would be able to put in the, d the three different values if you would have them to your disposal so i'm going to say cancel i'm going to leave it white for now next as you can see there is a fabric there are no fabrics included with this customizer but i scanned already some in so if i go to fabric and i browse here in the customizer i made three more folders one folder called fabric i double click on it and here I've got some fabric in here so let's say I want to stitch that bear on my denim jacket I click denim say open okay and now I have a denim background and you can see how that bear would look like when it's stitched on denim fairly easy to do you can just put the swatch on there and scan it in and I know some of you saw it already so if I double click here, there is another part of it called article. Needless to say, there are no articles coming with this software. It's understandable. It is a $200 piece of software. They can give you everything the big program has. But just with a little bit of thinking and innovation, you can go and get your own little piece of article. I may in the future make a little video about it how you can do that so I go to custom I got me already a few of them so I'm just gonna say browse I'm here back in the default in the fabric I go one up and you see I've got already a few in there so let's just say take this lady front I'm gonna say okay and now here I have this lady shirt and now i could place the bear wherever i would like and sort of give me an idea how it would look no i cannot change that color of that t-shirt so you would have to go and get a t-shirt that's the color you would like to stitch that on but at least it gives you some kind of an idea of how it would look or maybe where you would place it or don't want to place it on your garment this wraps up the tutorial about the canvas I hope I was able to give you some information about it and thanks for watching. See you next time.